Here we're on the slopes of Al Sangati mountain in the Andes of southern Peru. We're at 4,800 meters and this is one of the last refuges of the Andean mountain cat. Lives on these rocky slopes behind me here, below the glaciers where it feeds on biscachas. This is a very threatened, little known species of cat. And we're working with the local communities here to try and protect the cat by creating communally run reserves that bring a benefit to the communities through ecotourism and sustainable management of their natural resources. Forests of the region play an important role in terms of climate change, firstly as a store of carbon and secondly in controlling the climate. Also, on the eastern slopes of the Andes, the great altitude and gradient presents an opportunity that species can move up as climate does change to different elevations and this could be a key place for protecting biodiversity from the perils of climate change. just driven down the east slope of the Andes from 4,000 meters where there's puna vegetation and elfin forest. In about five, six hours we reach the Amazonian lowlands. Um, we're down here at just under 500 meters altitude. The temperature is much warmer, much more tropical. And this is the real heart of the biodiversity of southern Peru. And from here on, we shortly get into a boat and we have to travel by boat to reach the remoter areas of the Amazon lowlands. We've come down the east slope of the Andes and we're now at the lowest area, 200 meters elevation in the Amazon lowlands. Here there are no roads, we have to use these boats to move around from park guard post to park guard post. Down here we train park guards, we help supply and maintain and build control posts. And we also do wildlife monitoring, we, especially the giant otters are our focal species down here, so we use these boats to move from lake to lake to survey the populations of giant otters. We're now in the lowland Amazon of Mano National Park, a couple of hundred meters elevation. We're standing here in front of a huge saber tree, which is one of the forest giants, the emergent trees that stick up out of the forest canopy. And we're on our way to Lake Ocarongo. highly diverse forests of the region, an incredibly beautiful and highly complex ecosystem. This complexity means it's also very fragile. You lose one species and you can have a cascade of ecological effects through throughout the entire ecosystem. The main threats facing the area we work in are illegal logging for mahogany, deforestation for expansion of agricultural land and illegal mining on the rivers. Around the city of Puerto Maldonado, we've been implementing an environmental education project for the last years. We take local children as school groups to visit the rainforest. Many of them live in the city here or the villages around, but really don't know much about it. We take them to the forest and we explain to them how the rainforest works, why it's important, how the species live there and the challenges they face. We hope this will turn them into responsible adults who will be more environmentally aware and better care for this unique heritage.
Estamos en la Reserva Nacional Tambopata, realizando el monitoreo del lobo de río. El lobo de río es una de las especies mamíferas más grandes que existe. El lobo de río se encuentra en vías de extinción. El lobo de río nosotros utilizamos... En Perú, Frankfurt Zoological Society is perhaps most famous for its work on giant osses. This has been the flagship species for most of our work, especially in the lowlands. The giant otter is a great flagship because it represents the aquatic ecosystem and the lowland rainforests in one go. They're large animals that live in big family groups on the lakes. They're quite easy to see, very noisy, very interesting animals. But they have a problem. They're globally threatened. They were hunted to near extinction. And now they're susceptible to disturbance. People also need to live on and use these lakes. By working with the protected area authorities and local people, Frankfurt Zoological Society has been able to get the otters and the people to live in harmony. This means that the otters breed successfully and the local people benefit by being able to take tourists to see them. The east slopes of the Andes and the adjacent Amazonian lowlands where we are now are the most biodiverse areas on Earth. They're unmatched in numbers of species per unit area and in species totals. They're also home to important flagship threatened species like the Andean cat, the Andean bear and the giant otter. But most astonishingly of all, these forests are still home to uncontacted peoples of several different linguistic groups. And it's these reasons combined that make it so important that we find a way to preserve this vast wilderness area that remains in southeastern Peru. With your support, we can help ensure the long-term future for the forests of southeastern Peru, the incredible diversity of species that live there, and the people who depend on this ecosystem.